Felicity from Get Your Rock Out, and I'm talking to Ginger for the first time ever, which surprises me, but it's, it's just as exciting as it is surprising. So, hiya. <laughs> Hello, Felicity. How are you doing? I'm really good. How are you? I'm awesome. I'm great. I'm still alive. I'm 49. Uh, that's always a good thing. Um, and uh, on this, for the most part, the weather has been gorgeous, uh, and I'm just very, very excited to be here. I'm very excited to talk about gas. That is really, really cool. <laughs> like, really cool. I mean, this is the, the reaction that you've had to it so far has been overwhelming. Um, I mean, people seem to be really into it, but I mean, it's kind of no surprise because I think that everything you do, your fan base gets behind like 100%. Um, well, it's it's a sort of setup that isn't for everybody. It's a, it's a basically for anyone who doesn't know what gas is. It's a glorified fan club thing, but we just tons and tons of information, uh, too much if anything. Uh, new music, brand new songs, demos that you have, of songs that haven't been released, tons of podcast diaries. You know, an exhaustive amount of crap, uh, and it's really really cheap. It's thirty quid for twelve months, um, and that's cheaper than air. Probably, or at least milk. It's cheaper than milk. It's a lot cheaper than milk. It's a lot cheaper than milk. Yeah, um, basically, it's cheaper than anything you spend money on. Uh, but it, but it's 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 also trying to keep it uh, independent and break down final barriers between the musician and the audience. Um, so it's getting rid of all the middlemen that are, you know usually take commissions out of things. So you can put the stuff, the money back. Uh, into the service. Uh, the whole thing ab about my relationship with the fans is I try and keep things of a good quality. And I think that's why they come back, because they trust me. If you haven't got a fan club that trusts you, it's probably not going to work for you. But if you if you like your fans and they like you, then it's the kind of thing that probably will work for a lot of bands. But it's, it's not like Pledge. That's the difference. When you join this, you get service immediately. You don't have to wait for six months to a year before you hear anything. So you're not funding it, you're investing in a service. And are you keeping the content that you're releasing to members completely exclusive or will you be releasing it to kind of general public at a later date? Um, no, it's going to be for members only. It's all absolutely exclusive. Uh, what, we're going to, what we're trying to do is find out how many people actually want a CD and how many people don't care. Now, so it's a, it's a download only service for 30 quid. And there's a few tier systems, but 30 quid basically gets you everything. I, I would go for the 30 quid one. Um, and then we're going to have um, CDs and albums available based on how much they cost, based on how many people want them. So if there's 15 people who want a CD, it's going to be a lot more expensive than if 3,000 people want a CD. However, you can't buy them unless you're either a member or you're friends with a member. So it's tightening the community again, it's making people talk with each other again and, uh, and you know, make friends with someone who can get you a CD. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, and when it comes to stuff like, I mean, because your birthday bash at the end of this year, I mean, let's face it, that's going to be pretty exceptional. It's definitely going to be a big one. And are you going to be offering things like exclusive, exclusive access at things like that, at gigs you do and at tours? Or is it mainly for kind of release music and not the live stuff? Uh, no, there's, um, there's things, it's changing all the all the year uh, you know we're going to probably do a 12 months and then probably quit because it really is a full-time job um, but but everything that we do is, is exclusive there's loads of live footage there's backstage footage um, it's uh, and, and, the, and the birthday gig is going to be no exception they're going to be there talking to the guests and all the rest of it um, we've already got a ton of footage that we're going to be using as uh, exclusive footage basically it's kind of there's plenty of stuff to keep you entertained and so a lot of it probably is too much stuff, you know. If you try to follow it all, you just be there all day, and I don't want to do that. But if you've got no interest in podcasts, then don't listen to the podcast. Uh, but it's there should you want it. But yeah, lots of exclusive stuff. And do you, I mean, do you not have enough else going on at the moment? I mean, um, you're involved in so so many things. Um, is everything else kind of taking a back seat uh, while you're doing this, or are you basically going to try and be carrying out everything else on as well? No, I'm just going to try and shoehorn it all into my schedule. I mean, I'm, I'm playing guitar with Courtney Love now. Uh, that's interesting, as you can imagine. <laughs> but be immense. It's great. She's an icon, I mean, you know. Yeah. But but it's um, it's like anything. You want something done, ask a busy person, because we cram so much stuff into our schedule. But as soon as I decided to de dedicate and commit myself for the next 12 months doing gas, all of the work came in. So then Courtney's got tours and she's going to Australia in August. So just trying to mix it all up and make it work. I know we will, 
but it's it's pretty full on. It's a, it's a it's almost a full time occupation to just try and fit everything in that's before actually doing it. Wow! But it's It'll good. be fun to watch it happen. Like definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then by May when it's over, I'll probably die. But uh, <laughs> as long as I make it to the birthday gig, then it's fine. No one needs a 51st birthday gig. <laughs> I mean, the 50th birthday gig, it's going to be absolutely incredible. I mean, if previous years are anything to, to kind of go by, I mean, you must have something really special lined up. No, just being around for 50 years, I think, is quite, pretty special. I mean, what we, what we normally do is we have uh, tons of guests, and we're, um, a lot of the time they tend to choose the songs they want to sing. If someone sings a cover version or, a, you know, like an old punk song or whatever really well, we let them do that. This year we're going to make sure that we do all originals. Oh really? Yeah. So so you, so fans will kind of will know all of the songs, and. Um, and is this like originals of yours or originals of whoever's doing? No, the, the originals the, are mine. Originals so the, you know, fantastic. people are coming down, get to actually sing along to everything that we do, uh, and there's so many guests. I think we're probably going to limit it to like one song per guest. <laughs> And normally it's a little bit chaotic, but I think this year is going to be way more chaotic than normal. Fantastic. That's what we like to hear. And is this going to be the last one? What, like my last birthday? Yeah, no, 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 no. Well, no, I hope it's not your last birthday, but like last birthday gig, like kind of ending on, a, on 50, which is a big one. Or do you definitely intend to be carrying it on? Every year, there's, there's such a big chunk of, of, of your life when put, just putting them together and rehearsing that many people. I always say that's the last one. And the last one, the 49, was definitely going to be the last one. And then I just got sick of people going, you're not going to do a 50th? I wasn't. Should I? And everyone said, yeah, you've got, you're going to do any one. It's got to be your, your 21st birthday, your 80th birthday, your 50th birthday. It's a turning point. Um, is it going to be another one? I'd say no. Uh, the, likelihood that, the likelihood of there being another one, very high. So, I don't know. Jury's out. If I make it a 51, then it'll be a nice first world problem to have. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I um, mean, like you guys, you, you kind of toured with the Wild Hearts with the Hey Hello supporting at the beginning of this year. That was a fantastic tour. Like, we really, really enjoyed that. I mean, any more plans for, for Hey Hello? Is that going to be happening? Is there anything new? I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's, a, it's a funny situation. Uh, there's, I can't even talk about the situation because it involves, like, not really. I'm not going to be implicating anyone but there's certain things that don't need to be known like right. people's relationships and, and so politics has got involved and it's kind of changed things politics and uh, relationships uh, could see that hey hello won't do anything else but maybe it will i don't know right now it seems like it's probably going to be impossible it's a great shame indeed it is but you know it's it, it is it is what it is. You know. And I mean, and you've been involved in so many different things over the years that I mean, there'll be something else coming into. <laughs> you can guarantee that. Actually. Yeah, well, I'd be quite kind of shocked if there wasn't really. I think everybody would be be a little shocked if there wasn't. Hey man, how you doing? <laughs> At the Rev, play guitar with Hey Hello. Um, segways, we got them. Um, I've got this thing. I want to do something next year. That, depending on what happens, there's a bunch of different stuff uh, that I'm going to suggest uh, for the Wild Arts. Maybe they'll want to do it. Maybe they won't. You know, it's because uh, I fancy putting a band together. I find, I've always, every festival, especially, you go like, who's playing? And it's the same groups every fucking year. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with Iron Maiden, there's nothing wrong with Metallica, but for fuck's sake, you know, is that, that it, really? The, uh, they used to be the headliners when I was a kid. And, uh, and it, I like, like everyone else, getting excited about a new band. Um, and I, I want a new rock and roll band, and I might kind of put one together next year. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's all about finding the right singer, and I wouldn't want to sing, I'd want to find like a great come? front man. Um, because what I hear in my head is not my voice. <laughs> I'll be singing on other stuff and, you know, it's not like I'm going to retire or anything. But, no, I, I hear it being like it's just blistering, insane rock and roll band. That's not me. I'd, I'd be singing back and vocals. But I, it's, it's a fantasy that doesn't go away. Normally things go away, you know. Uh, so the, this one's still bugging me. And that usually means that I'll end up doing it. <laughs> and who are you thinking for that? I mean, who's... who's who have you... Because you've obviously... You must have some kind of thoughts as to who you want with you. No, not at all. No, I don't. I know, I know who I don't want. I mean, I know the kind of characters that I wouldn't want and the kind of... You know, the kind of... Well, the look that I wouldn't want, you know. And it's not going to be like a kind of 
an image-based band, but there'll definitely be a look that would, in my mind, be. I'd want a, look, a band to be like, you know, more, you know, more about the personalities than anything else. But right, right now it's just a, it's still a fantasy, and I haven't really delved into it that much. We'll see. I'm going to suggest a bunch of stuff for the Wild Arts, and then if they turn it down, then I'll do this. Otherwise, I may just do something with the Wild Arts. I don't know. But there's going to be there's going to be something happening next year. That sounds really exciting indeed. And I think one of your kind of main kind of selling points, as it were, much as I hate that word, but you've always managed to kind of maintain a huge intimacy with your fans, and you're, you're constantly interacting with them. You know, you're always talking to them, you're asking their opinions, and you're very honest with them. But there, there seemed to be a huge uproar lately when you said that you're like One Direction on Twitter. And I was shocked at the level of abuse that you seemed to get from that. I mean, did you did you say all of that just to provoke a reaction? No, no. I've got a I've got a, um, a five year old boy, and like everyone else, I didn't hear One Direction. I thought they sounded like Take That or New Kids on the Block, of which I don't like at all. Um, and then he came by and he was obsessed with his one video, and he played me and and I, and I, and I, and I, I like the song, so we went on Spotify, had a, a little listen to some more stuff, and I was like, this is just great stuff. To the point where I was starting to talk to people about, you know, do you hear One Direction? Do you like them? Um, I hear them, but I've never actually heard them. And I'm like, ah, that, I see the point here. There's the, there's a stigma attached to being a boy band. You only like them because the choreography. Have you seen them try to dance? No one's doing choreography with that band. And there is five, you know, well, the four northern lads and one Irish guy um, having fun, just taking the piss out of the whole boy band setup with great songs. So anyway, we went to see them live and they just put on a great show. I never really cared about what people think about my my musical taste. I've been getting shit from it since I was a kid, uh, and, I, and I still am. And it's just like I don't I don't believe in being closed-minded about music. I think it's um it's all there to be to be liked or ignored. I don't see the point in disliking music. It's like going about your way hating food, you know. <laughs> uh, just just to prove a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rallying against potatoes. <laughs> you wouldn't happen, would it? Um, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's I think it has happened in the past. I think you know, yeah, great potato hatred speeches that you've it probably happened of. with Wild Arts fans. <laughs> but I don't know. How, how can you hear five guys working hard and having fun? You know, and the, and the whole thing about yeah, but it's set up. You name me a big band that isn't set up. You think you know? I, I, you know, I, I know a lot about a lot of bands, and what you think is really authentic in groups, you're completely wrong. It's all like that. It's all just a bunch of middlemen. Thank you. <laughs> What a twat. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. There's, there's plenty of things being set up behind the scenes for rock bands, and there's, and there's bands using more backing tapes than One Direction. I'll tell you that. Uh, but yeah, just keep your, keep your mind open as far as music. And if you've got a closed mind, then what on earth are you following me for? Unless you're one of those people that complains that I don't write enough songs or riffs. There you go behind the camera, <laughs> mate. Uh, so yeah, I um, I like what I like. You know. Well, I'm afraid I could like spend the entire day talking to you quite happily, but I'm going to have to let you go. Um, but thank you so, so much for taking the time to chat. It's just been a massive, massive pleasure. Um, and I'm sure that we're going to see you with some project or another somewhere very soon. <laughs> I would hope so. so. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you so, so much. Thank this you very much. It's such a pleasure. <laughs>